Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. There has been a, a lot of cloud and rain around recently, but despite that, my tomatoes have started ripening. Now, will the weather be giving them a helping hand as we head through the next two weeks? As usual, I'll start by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 25th. And at the outset, it's a very similar pattern to the one which has been in place for much of July. An Atlantic flow is covering the United Kingdom. It's keeping things changeable or unsettled and not especially warm. As I run the sequence, what we see is heavy outbreaks of rain move across the UK through Wednesday and into Thursday, it then turns showery. But as the weekend approaches, this nasty area of low pressure becomes centered just to the northwest. Although by this point, the details start to become a less certain. Taken at face value, this particular sequence suggests a good deal of dry weather in southern and central regions through Saturday, with showers or longer spells of rain more likely there in the north, the northwest. But there are outbreaks of rain just starting to approach from the west through Saturday afternoon, and they cross southern and central regions through the night and into Sunday. Then on Monday, another area of low pressure brings heavy outbreaks of rain. But through Tuesday and into Wednesday, a weak ridge of high pressure topples across the UK. It quietened things down for a short time. Not for long, though, because another disturbance there is waiting in its wings. So a lot's taking place through the first week and with the details varying significantly on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis, do keep up to date by checking the short range forecasts. The jet stream and air temperature profile through week one helps to um, illustrate things as well. The mottled shading is where the jet stream is. Greens at this time of year indicate cool air, oranges and reds the very warm air. And as has been the case for much of July, the jet stream is taking quite a southerly track and it's bottling in that very, very warm air into southern Europe. Not a great deal changes through week one. At times, warmer air moves into the south and the east, but really the jet stream makes a beeline for the United Kingdom it keeps that unsettled theme in place. So not especially warm. If this is correct, let's take a look at some forecast uh, values at the ground level. So these are the two meter temperatures as opposed to the ones on previous sequence, which were at about 1500 meters above sea level. The maximums here on Wednesday afternoon, 21 or 22 Celsius in central and eastern England, cooler as you head north and west, often the case in recent weeks. Overnight lows will be varying. This is 06 GMT on Friday. Single figures in the northwest, so relatively cool up there, but rather muggy and humid in central and southeastern England, 17 Celsius there in the London area. Moving forward to the maximums on Friday afternoon, possibly the warmest day, or at least one of them through the first week. 24 Celsius in central and eastern counties, perhaps 25 or even 26 in the London area if there's enough sunshine. Values tending to be lower once more as you head further west, although pleasantly warm in northeastern Scotland. Finally, in terms of temperatures, Monday afternoon forecast maximums, 21 Celsius in northern England, so they have dipped again at this point due to cloud and rain pushing in from the Atlantic. And I mentioned the possibility of heavy outbreaks of rain on Wednesday and into Thursday. The charts here are from the UKV model, and they help to illustrate that quite nicely. For one left, 18 GMT, Wednesday the 26th, so that heavy band of rain moving across Northern Ireland and into Western Britain. The centre chart there is 23 uh, GMT on Wednesday. Heavy rain there affecting much of England and Wales. The red shading showing the possibility of some real downpours. And then by 02 GMT on Thursday, the 27th, it's starting to pull away eastward. So perhaps the worst conditions will be arriving overnight. Many people will be asleep, fingers crossed. Looking at the rainfall aggregate totals, though, for days not to five, ECM on the left, GFS on the right, all parts of the UK seeing rain. The highest values tending to be in the north and the west. 
Moving forwards to 0 to 10 days, the totals have continued rising everywhere. But once again, the highest value is mostly in the north and the west, though ECM, as has been the case in quite a few recent updates, is showing higher um, amounts of rain in southern and central parts of Britain than, than the GFS on the right. Nonetheless, though, both of the computer model runs are suggesting significant amounts of rain through the 0 to 10 day period in all of the United Kingdom. Now, looking at the deterministic models more generally towards the end of the first week, how do they compare with each other? Here is the GFS, which the sequence was based on Tuesday, the 1st of August, the last month of the meteorological summer. It indicates, as I've already hinted, that unsettled picture, high pressure from the Azores really staying too far to the southwest, the Atlantic remaining dominant. And that's the case with the Canadian Model 2, the German Icon, the European ECM, and finally, the UK Met Office Global. Of course, differences as ever in the details between them, but the general scenario is consistent. That is for the Atlantic to remain in the ascendancy, so disturbances moving in from the west across all parts of the UK, probably wettest in the north and the west, as I've just been suggesting with those deterministic uh, rainfall uh, totals, drier in the south and the east. But even there, significant amounts of rain are likely. Now, does that trend continue as we head through the second week? It's all about using the ensemble data, of course, at this range, just to identify the likely direction of travel, certainly not the details. Starting with the 16-day GEFS plot for London. Air temperatures across the top, similar to recent updates, really close to or perhaps slightly below the average later on. The thick black line is a 30-year norm. The thick purple line is the ensemble mean. And you can see that towards the end of the second week, it's dipping a little bit below the 30-year uh, mean, 30-year norm. In terms of rain, an ongoing risk through the second week. It does not look overly wet, although it's worth noting that the GEFS tends not to be very good at picking up the development of showers. So could be quite a lot of variance over short distances, as is the tendency at this time of the year. But as I say, there is that ongoing risk of rain there, even on this particular plot. Two metre temperatures for London using the data table. Once more, very similar to recent updates. This shading of orange dominating 21 to 25 Celsius, a little bit of a darker orange there, 26 to 30 and some of the lighter orange, which indicates 16 to 20. So close to average temperatures, I would think through the second week, warmer on some days relative to the average, but maybe some cooler days tucked in there as well. Up to Manchester, the yeah, air temperature profile, maybe a little bit more below the average than the London one was throughout the second week. You can see the thick purple line there below the thick black line. Also, there are more rain spikes than there were on the London chart, suggesting a greater risk of it being wet as you go further northwest. Two metre temperature data table. This shade of orange dominates 16 to 20, so cooler than London, very much as expected. Up to Glasgow, and the air temperature profile is really quite similar to the Manchester one, slightly below average. There are more rain spikes on this one than there were on the last two, indicating a greater risk of it being wet relative to the average for the time of the year. One or two very big spikes appearing further on. All in all, though, taking them together, very much as you would expect, a greater risk of rain in the north and the west, and that ties in, as I say, with some of the earlier charts which I showed. The two metre temperature data table for Glasgow, the 16s to 20s dominating here, but there is more yellow. Those runs going for between 11 and 15. So it's quite a mixed picture through the second week, at least based on this data. The ECM ensemble rain probability charts are quite informative as well. These are for the first three days of week two, and they show the percentage chance of rainfall exceeding five millimeters on each of those days. 
The orange shading is indicating between a 60 and 80% chance. So you can see on the left-hand chart there, it's covering much of the west and the north, but days two, uh, days uh, nine and 10, so the second and third days of the second week, are suggesting drier conditions are more likely there, especially in the south and the east. The light blue shading pointing towards between, say, 0 and 30% chance of rain exceeding five millimeters on each of those days in of those areas. Looking at the uh, same charts for days 11, 12 and 13, the pattern has really been reinforced here. It's drier in the south and the east of England, but wetter in northern and western parts of the United Kingdom. So that fits in quite nicely with what I've been discussing. And the 10 day mean surface level pressure forecast from the ECM ensemble, so Friday the 4th of August, is points towards high pressure resource maybe starting to come into play at this stage, at least in the south of the UK. And that would really back the message that drier conditions are becoming more likely in the southern part of Britain, wetter still in the north. The mean surface level pressure data table for York possibly uh, conveys the same message. This is uh, generated using data from the GEFS model rather than the ECM. And the amount of yellow there is increasing after the first couple of days. Those are runs going for between 1,011 to 1,025 millibars. Towards the very end there, there are, I think three runs going for mean surface level pressures of between 1,026 and 1,040 millibars. And as I've suggested before, it's really the oranges which point towards settled and warm weather at this time of the year. But with that increasing pressure trend through week two, what it would point towards is, at least in the southern half of the UK, an increasing chance of drier periods. So to summarise, week one, showers or longer spells of rain in all areas, and there is that heavy band of rain moving eastwards through Wednesday and into Thursday. There will be dry periods too though, especially in the south. Temperatures often close to the average, but warmest in central and eastern England. Friday, for example, may see values there reaching 24, 25 or even 26 Celsius. Week two, on the whole, it's a changeable theme once more, but the frequency of dry periods may start to increase, particularly in the south, as high pressure from the Azores maybe becomes a little bit more influential. Temperatures close to the average overall, a greater chance of it being warm relative to it in southern and central parts of the UK, cooler in the north. So, uh, there we have it. The mixed weather continues, but there is that possibility and that's really all it is at this stage of an increasing chance of drier conditions developing at least in the southern half of the UK as we go through the second week. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. As ever, if you did, please remember to hit the like button below. Also, consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. And Keep up to date with the day-to-day -day forecast details by checking the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much now. Bye.